so so the reason I'm telling you all this is because you know this is where the metaphysical and the physical unite and this is the sort of argument that I was trying to make to Sam Harris and hopefully we'll be able to continue doing that because I'm going to meet him three times in the next few months so that the the yin yang idea the chaos order idea is metaphorical in some sense to say that the world is made up of order and chaos doesn't sound like an empirical statement but strangely enough the world to which our brains are adapted is actually the world of chaos and order you can think about it as unexplored and explored territory too that's another that's another you know take on it and so then you think from a darwinian perspective think about it this way from a darwinian perspective there's an there's an, an axiomatic presupposition, and that is reality is that which selects, okay? Reality is the force that selects over evolutionary time. And so the force that selects over evolutionary time has selected for hemispheric specialization, bilateral hemispheric specialization, which indicates that two different modes of looking at the world are necessary for survival, right? So that's real. And so the idea that the world is made out of chaos and order is perhaps the most real idea. Now, here's something else cool that's associated with that. And this is an antidote to nihilism. I also think it's an antidote to, to what would you call, um, ideological, ideological possession. So, when you encounter something unknown, you orient towards it. And that's an involuntary response. You could even think about it as a deterministic response. It's part of what orients you very rapidly towards predators so that they don't kill you before you have a chance to respond. Okay, so you react because the anomalous thing is meaningful. It's intrinsically meaningful. And the reaction is first, terror, with perhaps an overlay of disgust, and second, curiosity. And it's terror so that you freeze and remain paralyzed. You turn to stone when you look at the basilisk or the snake or the gorgon. You turn to stone. You're paralyzed like a prey animal. And that's so the prey predator can't see you, at least in part. And there's other elements of the orienting reflex that are associated with predator avoidance. And then if nothing additionally terrible happens, you start to thaw out and you start to explore. And you do that with image first and, and, then, pra and then practice the appropriate behaviors and then, and then automate those. Now, look, here's the thing that's cool. So that orienting reflex to the unknown is it's an admixture of threat, fear, and curiosity incentive reward so negative emotion and positive emotion now and it's dose dependent the larger the anomaly which means the larger the map it blows out when it manifests itself think of the difference between being irritated at your uh, marital partner because they you know um, oh who knows because they were late to pick you up for work compared to how irritated you would be if you found out they were having an affair difference in size of anomaly the first one disrupts a tiny little part of your space-time orientation, and the second one demolishes your past, present, and future. And the larger the disruption, the more negative emotion, obviously. And so, so there's this weird interplay between negative and positive emotion in the response to anomaly. And, but it's deeply meaningful, even if, it's, even if it paralyzes you, even if it's terrifying, it's meaningful. And then that transforms perhaps into intense curiosity and you start to explore. Now, the phenomena of meaning is a manifestation of the complex orienting reflex. And so you're wired so that you're not just order and you're not just chaos. You're order continually confronting chaos so that the order remains updated. And you might say, well, how do you know how much chaos you should confront in order to keep the order continually updated? And the answer is meaning see something is meaningful the reason that something is meaningful is because you're getting a deep instinctual signal that you're encountering anomaly at a rate that doesn't exceed your capability that's also the rate at which you can keep yourself updated optimally and so meaning isn't epiphenomenal and it and it isn't it isn't some kind of delusion that rationality can and should overcome to say well everything's meaningless it's like no it's not meaning is the most fundamental instinct for adaptation and so that's partly why in 12 Rules for Life, I said one of the rules, um, I think it's rule seven, is do what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Because meaning is a really good guide to long-term adaptation. And so then, and the other thing about meaning, which is what happens when you get the balance between chaos and order right, is that meaning is the antidote to despair. And so 
if you and there's all sorts of reasons in life to be desperate and so if you immerse yourself in meaning you can learn to do that you can learn to do that you can make that goal your highest goal and so then the highest goal would be to be the sort of mythological hero let's say to embody and incarnate and imitate the mythological hero like the imitation of Christ which is what you're called to do if you happen to be Christian that means that you live in meaning and that meaning is the antidote to the suffering of life that would otherwise make you brutal and vengeful and unhappy and miserable and like